G'day guys, Life on the Hulls. Here we are again, and this week it's going to be a monster. Um, I got a lot of questions when we were joining the hull and the deck about why I didn't seal the gunnels of the boat. Now, the reason why I didn't do that is because firstly, we didn't have time, and secondly, I wanted to make sure that I had a perfect match, and it gave me some breathing space with which to make sure that the entire gunnels matched up and lined up exactly as we wanted them. So this week, Janet and I are going to actually join these with epoxy. We're going to actually glue them down and screw them into place. So that's the first part of this week's video. The second part of the video, ha, I'm gonna butcher the bejesus out of the top of this deck and uh, you're all gonna cringe when you see what I gotta do to this. So let's get into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you to our patrons and thank you to everyone that's watching. In fact, without you guys, these channels do not exist and uh, I'd have this boat finished long ago if I wasn't creating videos. So thank you for following me. Thanks for the support and all the comments. I love it. We love it. Janet and I are so proud to, uh, to have you guys, our viewers. Thanks guys. Let's get into it. So we're ready to join it, Jen. Yeah, well, we've lowered the deck. It's time to finish this. So this gap here, uh, we left this till today because it was just going to be too much. And to be honest, I wanted to make sure it was all pretty even. And I've got it very, very close, probably within five millimeters all the way around. But and I sanded both surfaces before we dropped it. But it is high humidity today, so what I'm actually doing here is I've just got some acetone on a rag and I'm cleaning both surfaces. Remembering it's only going to be about one centimetre of epoxy um, holding this thing together and then I'm going to be tabbing it and then we're going to grind the flange off. So just by cleaning the surface and getting the humidity um, is an issue here. I just want to make sure that we sort of do it reasonably quickly after we smear this acetone. Um, but right now you can see it's pretty close. There's a bit of undulation in it and that's where there's differing thicknesses of laminate, but that's not really going to cause a problem because I'm aiming for about five millimeters of epoxy all through this gap here. Yeah, not very nice sound, is it? No, no, no. It gets nice and clean. Okay, Janet and I are about to join the hull sides, the gunnels of the boat. Now, this is a pretty important step because we've got a bit of a process. What we're going to do, we're going to actually lever it open with a chisel um, or a, a lever and then we're going to pipe the epoxy into the gap and then I'm going to go outside and tighten the bolts respectively as we go along and uh, and then Janet and I are going to clean up. Uh, we don't expect too much ooze out but we do want to fill this gap and then we're going to leave it bolted together until I get all of the tabbing done inside. This will be tabbed from here to here, like probably four layers of 600 double bias to make sure that we get it all tabbed. Now I have had to do a little bit of pushing and shoving and a little bit of um, a little bit of adjustment in certain areas. In the stern cabin on the starboard side here, you'll notice here I've got this piece of wood jammed in here. We ended up with these wedges here. This is in exactly the right spot here, but as we went along, this area here was flexible enough that it was actually moving in, so there would have been a slight underbite. And I also had to, you see that light coming through that bulkhead there, I had to cut a sliver out of the bulkhead, ratchet strap it in, and then glue the sliver back in. Now that was done yesterday, so that's now solid, and at the back it is perfect. So the whole thing has been tortured into place, and certainly without distending the outside, I had to be careful I didn't create any lines or any you know, undue bumps that were going to affect the fairing of the boat. So I'm going to start up in the bow on the starboard side here, and I'm going to pipe it in all the way along this gap here, all the way along. Now I've got about a centimetre, and then I'm going to screw it together with the bolts from the outside. So I've got all manner of clamps and, and bolts and nuts and bolts and stuff going along here to join that flange, and hopefully a stern section yet. I'm more worried about getting this whole thing together. Now the bow has had some issues and I'll talk about that a bit later on, but let's get on with it. Get mixing. Going in. Going in. Got this mixing gig down, Pat, haven't you? Mm -hmm. My job. 
My own personal plural mixer. One thing, never let go of this end. <laughs> you don't want to dent your arms. Alright, ready? But yeah, so that's now filled. Um, I'm going to do the entire side and then I'll go along with my spanners and or my wrenches and tighten it all up and then we can come in and clean it up and just leave a minimal of overspill all the way along here but yeah there's quite a big gap here I'm gonna have to make sure that I get plenty in and I don't want to be backfilling this if I can help it I still want to join the flange but I don't want to have too much come into the boat I'd rather go out on the flange when we tighten these bolts It doesn't matter how I have to try to keep clean, this stuff will be coming out of the tip there and I'll end up on my elbow. Somehow, I don't know how that happens. You can see the gap there, so we're going to tighten that down to within about five millimetres is what I'm aiming for the whole way around. I love a good run like this. Been a few years in the making getting this done. <laughs> it's going together. I'm doing this one here, just tell me what it's doing. Should close down, I'm hoping it all. How's it looking just right in front of you there? Is that closed up? That's all right. Just tighten this clamp down. Just. Mm. Oh, right. Hey, you Hey. Hey. <laughs> Look at that. Sweating. It's not even hot. I'm sweating like a heat. That's as tight as now. That's actually really, really tight along there. As good as I can get it. A lot of glue and uh, and the tabbing's going to hold it together. That's the key. Nice because that underbite actually disappeared. As we screwed it together, I actually angled the holes that I've drilled, and as it's gone, it's pulled the, the deck towards the hull, which is sort of what I was anticipating. And now I've got. <laughs> I reckon about as close as I could have ever got. Hey, Wolfa. She's happy, and she's just happy to be here, isn't she? Yeah. Got a job for a really small person. Um, talking the flange of the bow right at the very bow is a job for someone very tiny. A big pun? I'm not going to do that. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> Janet just let me have it. Because no, I asked her to get, I actually asked her to get in there. And we're not even sure she fits. With no warning. So it freaked me out. Yeah. Janet, would you mind going down that hole? Can't get it past my chest. I just cannot get. If I go in there, there's no coming out. You have to cut me out with a grinder, and that would not be pleasant. So, I know that you might fit. Are you going to get me out, right? Yeah, I can get you out. As long as you put one arm up and one arm down, as we used to do when we used to cave dive in holes this small. Oh, it wasn't quite this small, but we went down some pretty small holes, and we used to have one arm down and one arm up, so that you could pull yourself out if you get stuck or pull yourself in but it is a tiny hole this one's about 
four foot deep. Maybe not four foot, maybe three and a half foot, but yeah, look at that. Oh, it's just blew the cave diving rule. One arm in, one arm out, that's it. Oh, well done. So, so what Janet's gonna do, she's going to cork epoxy all the way around this flange and basically fill entirely around that flange and then uh, and then come Monday or Tuesday, I'm gonna get Janet back in there to do some tabbing. That's gonna be fun, isn't it? Check up in the bow of your boats, guys, if you've actually had the ends finished properly. It's one thing we used to find with kayaks, I never quite finished them on the ends. There's only a few brands we found that actually did a good job on the ends. In fact, what we used to do, we used to stand the boats on their ends and pour a resin, a very cool resin that was more like a marbling resin that you'd use for bench tops into the end to make a solid nose. Around about half a cup full, 150 mils was all that was needed to consolidate that join because you can never consolidate it properly uh, because of the length of the nose. Obviously some of them are four or five foot long, you just can't get up there, you don't want to stick in a brush. So we pour the boat, end pour it, and then we put that in a bucket of water. And what that'd do, it'd actually uh, keep the exothermic heat down while we uh, while we basically consolidated that nose and then we do the seam on the outside. But for now, Janet's doing a great job in here, aren't you darling? Oh. I'm having a chat while Janet's doing the hard graft. That's good. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, this bow is now done on the port side and uh, we had to go in and do a little bit of a clean up because it got a bit messy in there, didn't it, Don? It's r 2 d Righto, that's pretty small in there, isn't it? Righto, I'm gonna hand this to you, ready? Get it in there. Probably a bit too much, Don, probably a bit less. Look good, yeah, look at that. We've got a lot of glue here. <laughs> you alright? I think she's over, it's been in there for a good half hour. Okay, up we come. A tight, uh, tight hatch. It's a shame it's not a bigger hatch on there. In fact, if I was doing it again, I'd probably change that front hatch into a proper square hatch. But anyway, we didn't. We don't need it. I think it'll be a fender locker anyway. <laughs> Wild woman of the north. Oh, thanks, I like it. I like it. I like my woman wild. <laughs> Well, it was a bit of an epic session yesterday. Janet and I joined this side, the starboard side, and then we simply ran out of time. The humidity was just ridiculous, and I thought, there's no point in trying to do the port side until I know that this side goes off. So I've come in this morning, and it is rock solid. Absolutely no chance of that not curing. It had already sort of semi-cured before I left, but I just want to make sure that it was rock hard before I attempted to do the other side. I've got a million other jobs I could go on with, uh, and that's the beauty of working on my own. I don't have a production team here working with me. I'm not sort of forced for time ever, um, other than I want the thing in the water. So what I've come in to do is um, I'm just gonna remove these wedges that I put in here to hold the whole sides out, and you'll notice that I've actually filled the gap at the top. Now this was joined here last Saturday, a week ago, and I filled this with epoxy. I no longer need the wedges in there. So I can now come in and backfill that today. And then on Monday, I intend to sand this whole thing down. And, uh, and same deal up here, this gap here. Now I left this deliberately. I did glue it to here, but I didn't go any further. And I actually gave good instructions not to do that because this part here needed to be flexible enough to align it to the whole side. Oh, time for a break. I just got a parcel and this arrived from Canada and uh, Rick Laporte in Ontario sent this to me and he did warn me that it was coming so I have no concept as to what it is. Um, it was sent on the 27th of October and it's now the 24th of February. It just goes to show you the, um, the supply chain problems we have. Normally this would take about three weeks. It is now uh, four months later I've received this. Now I do happen to love the way Rick wraps his gifts um quite amazing it's a map i think i think it's actually a map of ontario and uh and i'm pretty wrapped to have received this in four months and uh i know the poor bugger's just come back from mexico and he's back into the deep freeze so let's open it up and have a look 
Well, be one of his cats. Because he's always uh, spruiking his cats. This. I hope it's an air conditioner. <laughs> Not likely from that big fella. So Rick's got a boat building channel and, uh, and I suggest you go and have a look. I'm gonna put a link up there, which is a beautiful old trawler. And uh, this guy, what have you sent me? Oh, you champion. Canadian Coast Guard key. Oh, that's good. Actually, I'm gonna need that for interim because uh, I'm always losing my keys. Canadian Coast Guard. I've actually never called on them. I've paddled the west coast of British Columbia quite extensively. And, uh, oh, and this is the boat he's building. It's a TW28 Bateau, TW28 LC by the look of it. You must go and check out his channel. He's, uh, he's been going on it for a few years and, and due to the weather that he gets there, he does struggle a little bit with the temperatures. So um, hopefully it's gonna warm up soon a bit for you, mate. Mate, I'm stoked. Do you know what? I reckon I'm gonna go and have coffee. That's superb. Might put some beer in it actually, mate. Thank you so much. You are an absolute champion. I really appreciate it. And uh, my God, I waited for it. I'll tell you now, you poor bugger. The day has come to cut out that roof section, that circular roof section. I'm going to cut it about five centimetres from the end of the cabin so that I maintain a bit of structure there, remembering that that hard top is going to interlace into that front face of that curve that goes all the way around. So I'm going to cut it directly along the top of the lump and essentially make sure that I get a good clean cut with a grinder. Uh, I, I can't just cut it because that's probably 150 kilos of foam there that I don't want going boom into the cabin because it'll damage the boat. So what I've had to do, I've had to prop it up with jacks and acro props and clamps and the like. And I've also had to consider the fact that this may be a little weaker on the top here until I get the new hard top in place. So I've had to brace this whole thing up. <laughs> this calls for a very special blend of subtlety and extreme violence. I bought out the big nine inch grinder that I used to cut the mold in half. I need to get through around 50 millimeters of fiberglass and foam up in this area here along this line here. So that's gonna be sliced straight across. I've got an acro prop and a ladder and a jack and, and a whole manner of clamps holding the whole thing in place so that when it comes finally loose, it doesn't fall into the boat. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to jack it up and slide it back onto the top here. But let's just get it cut first. I'll see how I go here. Um, I'm gonna basically leave you at this angle because I've got a split in my suit and I definitely don't think you guys wanna see that. Um, Right, we're almost there. I'm down to the small grinder here. Okay, the way I've set this up is I've got a jack over here and I've got an acro prop over this side. So I should be able to lift the roof and it's supported by these two timber bearers I've got here. Um, but what I've got to do first is just let this <laughs> no, just stand there and push up. There's no airborne stuff. Push up. Just hold it for a second. Oh, okay. 
All right, well that's cut out and uh, we just had a bit of a scare. So uh, we almost got our dog run over by a tow truck and um, that scared the crap out of us. So I'm done, I'm gonna leave it sit there. It's that on Acra Props and on a jack, but it's done. I got some nice airflow in here now. What? Put a, I reckon I'll just do a big Perspex roof, but then uh, I don't think my ball patch would handle the UV. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. 